Yeah. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this special uh, executive wellness uh, leadership program. Uh, we are going to begin with unit one, but before we start, uh, I'd just like to uh, call our attention to why uh, this forum is very, very important. Uh, in this forum, we are going to be holding a collaborative conversation around uh, mental wellness through a special program called Executive Wellness Leadership Program. As you all know, uh, perhaps if you don't know, you will know now that mental health breakdown is a big deal all over the world. The number of people suffering from depression around the world is halami. In fact, it has been stated that over 200 million people around the world are said to be depressed. In Africa alone, it is estimated that between 100 and 160 million people are suffering from clinical depression or other psychotic uh, illnesses, according to World Health Organization. This is about 10% of the entire African population. The situation is even more terrifying when we come uh, you know, to Nigeria, where one in every four Nigerians is suffering from chronic depression or any other psychotic illness, which means about 50 million of the entire 200 million population in Nigeria is depressed. This is why this executive wellness leadership program is critical. It is an intervention and preventative program to help turn things around. Through our own private and personal research and interactions with mentally healed or mentally healed individuals, we have discovered about nine choices that an individual has to make in life to lead and live a productive life. The choices are choice to be happy. We're going to be looking into that today. We're going to be looking at the choice to live my life with purpose and meaning. We're also going to consider that today. We're also going to look at the choice to live with peace of mind. We're going to consider the choice to live out my God-given potential. We're going to look, look at the choice to embrace my own self-identity. That is number five. Then we're going to look at the choice to uphold the dignity of my humanity. That is number six. The seventh choice is the choice to be self-governed. The eighth choice is the choice to collaborate with others. And the ninth choice is the choice uh, to flourish in life. This program seeks to address the all, the agility and the fulfillment of dreams of every individual through leadership capacity development. Those who are going to participate in this program will realize their potential. Number two, they will learn how to cope with stress and challenges of life. Number three, they will engage with productive work. They will learn how to engage productively at work. Number four, they will learn how to co-create together with others. And number five, they will learn how to contribute meaningfully to their communities. And our rules are guiding this conversation are number one, I'd like you to know that there is no right 
or wrong answer, but a healthy conversation. Number two, participants are to contribute, observe, and learn. Number three, participants are free to ask any questions. And number four, anybody in the group is free to contribute to the conversation. Now, let's begin the business. Like I had already shared with us, uh, we cannot afford to be silent anymore about the oncoming. Some people had already started calling it a uh, they, they already started calling it a silent epidemic. But if care is not taken, it will soon become another global pandemic if proactive action are not quickly taken. So that is why we are taking this executive wellness leadership program because I discover through my research that an average person is going to spend two third of his life working for an organization or for their own private business. So the entire two third of your life is going to be spent working. And that is why this wellness, executive wellness leadership program is very, very important because in the place of work or in your workplace, there are going to be challenges, there are going to be obstacles, there are going to be ups and downs, there are going to be stress, there are going to be a lot of challenges that are going to come your way. And you need to learn how to cope uh, with all these challenges uh, that may come your way. And it is also uh, well known, particularly in Africa, where we have uh, 70 percent of the population under the age of 35 and which means this group of people you know the young adults are going to be the major people in the workforce and that is why we need to now begin to take a proactive step to ensure that we give them resources and support that can help them, uh, to navigate this situation. So we are going to start with unit one. We have nine units all together. We're going to start with unit one, which is the choice to be happy. This is a choice that everyone, every one of us, we need to make this choice every day of our life. It does not matter what may have happened to you. It does not matter what you are currently facing. It does not matter what the economy is saying. It does not matter what the political, uh, the social political system is saying. You have to make that choice to be happy, regardless of your prevailing circumstances. And the choice to be happy, my own choice doesn't have to be your own choice. We just have some, we just have to make a choice that is compatible uh, to what we stand for, to our values and our purpose in life. And that is why Abraham Lincoln said, most, most folks are about as happy as they make up their mind to be. Most folks are about as happy as they make up their mind to be. So in other words, there is no condition, no situation that will make you happy. The amount of the measure of happiness that you have is going to be as a result of how much of it you want in your life. There is another Arabian proverb that says, he who has health has hope, and he who has hope has everything. I once make this illustration that if you have a business that is worth billions of dollars, 
in liquidity, in assets and everything. And you are challenged in your health. You cannot even raise your hand. You can't lift, you can't lift your leg. You are just on the on the sick bed. You can't do anything. You are practically helpless on the sick bed. I, I, I would like to bet you that your priority at that moment is not going to be your business. Your priority at that moment will be to get well. That will be your priority. Your priority at that time will be to get well. So this is why our health is so important. And our health is directly proportional to how much happiness we allow to take place in our life. So let's begin to ask ourselves the questions. Perhaps you, may, you might have thought about this question, but you have not really sat down to ask yourself. You know, sometimes there are some things in life, they look so simple, but because they are so simple, we often overlook them. We don't know the benefit and the value they can deliver to us. So let's start by asking ourselves, what is happiness? I don't want you to see happiness from the definition of your uh, fellow person or from the definition uh, that you encounter somewhere. Uh, what I am really asking is what is your own definition of happiness. And now let's try to guide our discussion by taking this wisdom quote from Ellen Keller. Ellen Keller says, many persons have a wrong idea of what constitutes true happiness. Happiness, according to Ellen Keller, is not attained through self-gratification but true fidelity to a worthy purpose. That is just a wisdom code to guide our discussion. So I am asking you, what is happiness? Don't bother what happiness is to me. I am asking you as an individual, what is happiness? And let's begin to engage with that question. What is happiness? You can unmute yourself and then talk. Go ahead and unmute yourself and talk. Is anyone talking? Mm. Yes. Good yeah. afternoon. Go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Atenike. So, um, for me, happiness, um, happiness for me doesn't last. I think what we actually need is joy. Because happiness can, you can be happy now and in the next um, 30 minutes, by the time you, you know, you, you go back to your space of mind before that feeling of happiness, you will still have the problem and that, that, that sense of depression will still come back to you. So I think happiness, anybody can make you happy. That is, human beings can bring that feeling in you. But what we sustain that individual, even when that individual is by himself or herself, is joy. And to have that kind, jo that kind of joy, it comes from the feeling or the knowledge that whatever it is you are, you are, you are doing right now, you are living up to your best moment. That is, you are fulfilling purpose. You are finding fulfillment in whatever it is wow. you are doing at that particular moment. You are happy 
with the space of mind. I mean, with the space you are in right now, you are happy with whatever tomorrow is going to be. Even though you probably don't know what tomorrow is going to be like, but you know that with what you are doing right now, you know that tomorrow is going to be fruitful. So for me, I think happiness is fickle. It doesn't last. Joy is what we should be talking about. Thank you. Thank you. I think there is one uh, statement that, that really grabbed my attention. And that is happiness is living in the best, uh, living out your best moment in life. I think that really is very powerful. Every day, I, the only thing I would just say is not just for the moment, but every day we should try to create that moment of living up. Uh, to that best moment and ensuring that we create that moment on a frequent basis. Thank you very much. Do we have any additional uh, additional contribution to that? I know some people have tried to define it on the chat. I will read that in a moment if I get somebody who wants to talk? If not, who wants to talk? If not, I will uh, read out what I have on the chat. Uh, somebody said, I think it's Mayowa who said, happiness is a broader and long-term emotional state, while joy is a more intense and transient emotion that arises from specific experience or event. Happiness is a positive emotional state characterized by feelings of joy, contentment, and overall well-being. Wow, this is very powerful. You know, in this conversation, we are, we are not trying to say this is the best answer, or this is the right answer, or this answer is wrong. I, I want every one of us to be a judge of whatever conversation that is arising uh, from this session. I'd like you to listen, to observe, to learn, and then to take action. So do we have any other contribution? What is happiness to you? Forget what it is to your neighbor. What is it to you? I hope I can get one or two more definitions that will move on. What is happiness? All right. Maybe we should try to do a summary of what we have said so far. And I'm going to do my summary by trying to quote what Aristotle said. Aristotle, one of the foundational founding father of philosophy, said happiness should result in what he called eudaimonia. And what is eudaimonia? Eudaimonia is the total well-being of a man, a true state of happiness. That is what eudaimonia is. Another way to conceive eudaimonia is total well-being of a man or the flourishing of a man. That is what happiness is, according to Aristotle. So our leadership mindfulness thought, as we wrap up the conversation about what happiness is, is that happiness is one choice 
to be made in life that require no surrogate party to be effective. You see, when we talk about happiness, you don't need your wife or your husband or your pastor or your, your boss at work, your leader at school, or wherever you may find your, yourself or your, your superior in your workplace. You don't need them to make you happy. Although they can add immeasurably to your happiness, but you don't need them to have to, to, to you don't need them to make you happy. Happiness, by our own definition, it's something that must be self-generated by you. And you don't need any surrogate party to make that happen. Now let's move to the next question. We're still talking about happiness. And we are trying to look at happiness from your own point of view. Now, let me ask you, how do you know that you are happy? Or if I want to personalize it, you may want to ask yourself, how do I know that I am happy? How do you know that you are happy? You ask yourself that question. What are the things you need to see? Or what are the things that needs to happen that will give you the opinion that at this moment, I am truly happy? Now, let's try to guide our conversation by trying to understand the wisdom quote of William Gladstone. William Gladstone said, be happy with what you have. And what you have. Be generous with both and you won't have to hunt for happiness. Let me say it again. William Gladstone says, be happy with what you have and what you have. Be generous with both and you won't have to hunt for happiness. Now let's engage that question. How do you know that I am happy? Ask yourself that question. How do you know that I am happy? Your answer doesn't have to be mine. My answer doesn't have to be yours. You don't have to be afraid whether they are going to judge you, whether you are wrong or right. We just want to have a healthy conversation about this important question. How do I know that I am happy? Yeah. Mm -hmm, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. Okay. Good evening. Thanks for the teaching, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I was gonna send the I sent something to the group the other time, and I, I thank you for reading it out. Thank so you. I I think there's a lot of way you can know that you're happy. There's a lot of way you can know like there's some things to put in place. Even naturally, without even saying it, there's a way you can happy by having positive emotion about something like. Having a positive emotion, having a something. Yes, something. When you have a total well-being, that's overall total well-being. Yeah. Well -being. In the case you're talking, there's something that comes to my mind. is a um, peace of mind. When you have peace of mind. Wow. So some people just be yeah, trouble. to talk about that, but that is also one factor. When you have peace of mind, when you have when, when you have this sense of over, overall well-being, then you know yeah. that you're happy. Right. When you when you have when you when things satisfy you when life satisfy you when you are this, fully satisfied with how things are turning out in your you life you want to be like someone else yeah uh, you are not you are, you have expectation you are not meeting mm. these are something these are the negative impact of sadness when you are just sad okay I'm not rich I'm twenty seven years old I'm not I'm not make this I'm not do this I'm not do that. Mm -hmm. Naturally, before you know it, these are conversation conversation you have within, and then mm -hmm. sadness is retained. But when mm -hmm. you don't care about those things, it's not that you, are, you don't. It's not that you are not reasonable. Yeah. Or don't set them as priority. You just want to be okay, so you get to be happy, mm -hmm. and then enjoying the present moment. Wow. Having a um positive outlook. 
Wow. So you have a lot, you have a lot. We are in now, this, These are Just very you. powerful points you are you are raising here. They are so important, and I really appreciate you for that. Just like I actually was reading about that of recent. So I felt I uh, was something playing like, along with. So when you're energetic, you just you are vata like you have hey, another thing I read about is having an LD relationship. I was surprised when I go through that too. Wow. Having an LD relationship. LD relationship. I was like, how does relationship go with happiness? Wow. So if you are happy enough, you'll be able to um protect happiness to others. Wow. We have a lot of sad folks going to relationship and then nowadays and you realize that you will mess everything up. Mm. Mayo, well, you, you really done so well this this point this don't let me say suggestion this contribution you have you have made they are very very vital and i believe uh, we are all learning from them uh do we have any additional contribution to that to what Mayowa has just said he has said so much uh, perhaps we will want to have one or two views before we proceed further. Yes, good evening. Yeah, you're welcome. Good evening. Yeah, um, Toby. Um, how do I know I am happy? Mm. From my own perspective, uh, everything uh, Maiwa said, they are top-notch. But at the same time, I, I think uh, we could probably see in this line that Sometimes the kind of relationships we have make us happy. Mm. Self, um, um, le le we, we all have, uh, um, how I put it, a plan. When I'm 10, I want to do this. When, I, when I'm 30, I want to have this. When I'm this, when, we all have a plan. But sometimes we, life happens and we don't reach our, our uh, uh, slated point. But at the same time, even being alive to me, is 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 more than enough reason for us to be happy, like because there are so many people. I was I was opportune to be in a in an hospital just of recent, and you notice that even people that are, that you you look you are seeing outwardly that wow this person is is living fine is they are going through a whole lot. Mm. So and there's this saying that our generation there are so many sad people with happy faces. Hello. Yeah, we are listening. So there's there are so many people uh, there are so many people that that are that are wearing a happy face with a sad in, inwardly. Mm. So I think to know if you are genuinely happy, it has to it has to come in the terms of self evaluation. You have to you have to evaluate yourself. Self -evaluation. Like, like yes, like, like what Mario Watt said, you have to prioritize happiness over. Uh, the, Every other thing. The situations that may have be happening around you, you have to prioritize yes. happiness. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I think somebody also contributed uh, online. If I'm not mistaken, that is um, uh, the lecturer in our miss, right? Sister Denika, am I right? No, Ms. Agbola is the lecturer. Okay, she's, she's not here yet. Yeah. Okay, so uh, she is saying, Adenika is saying, I know I am happy when I am truly delighted with my immediate state. I know I am happy, is trying to rephrase it in another way. I know I am happy when I cannot remember any negative states I have been through and I am contented with my moment. Wow, this is this is this is powerful. You know, this this these are the things that we all need to learn about and then prioritize in our life uh, to make ourselves happy. Thank you everyone for, for this wonderful uh, contribution. Uh, let's try to tidy things up. Uh, you know that you are happy when you realize you have capacity to make other people happy. That is, you know, Toby said the other time that the relationship in our life can also determine, 
kind of relationships we have in our life can also determine how uh, can also determine how happy uh, we can be in life and how much we are also contributing to other people in that relationship can also determine how much happiness we, de we derive through life. So our ability to realize and to make other people around us happy, contribute to their happiness, make them happy, can also uh, help us determine how much happiness we derive through life. And here is our leadership mindfulness thoughts. Happiness is a state of contentment and fulfillment as presupposed to accumulation of wealth or attaining a status of honor within the society. Let me repeat again. Happiness is a state of contentment and fulfillment as presupposed to accumulation of wealth or attainment of, stat of a status of honor within the society. Now let's move to the next question. Where can I be happy? You know, this is, this is, and you know, some of these questions, they are very simple, but they are very highly philosophical. Where can I be happy? Do I have to be in Dubai to be happy? Do I have to be in Johannesburg to be happy? Do I have to work with NMPC to be happy? Do I have to work with Chevron to be happy? Do I have to be a school teacher to be happy? Do I have to be a school professor to be happy? Where can I be happy? Do I have to begin to lecture in the university? So is our happiness tied to a specific location? Is our happiness geographical? That is what we are asking. Now let's try to try to shape our conversation by trying to understand it from the wisdom quote of Wayne Dare. Wayne Dare says, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. He said, there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. Now let's begin uh, to make conversation around, around the question, where can I be happy? Where can I be happy? Where can I be happy? Yeah. I think we should, we should look at it from this angle that, um, it begins where we are at the moment, probably from the home. Yeah, where are because, we are. Because uh, Yorubas will say, Atile Lati Peshorodi. Mm. So if your I immediate environment is not... Are you there? Hello? I said charity begins at home. Uh, charity begins, yes, at home. So we, we, have to, we have to consider the fact that if our immediate environment is not, is not supportive, as in is not uh, a, a happy environment for us, we might find it a little bit difficult to uh, to live fully with our happiness. Mm. So that's my own contribution. Thank you very much. Uh, so if we don't appreciate where we are today, it will be very difficult to make progression uh, to where we should eventually be. We have to be comfortable with where we are. Not that we will be comfortable with negative situation, but we have to be contented uh, with our current situation, knowing fully well that we are making proactive step or we are making proactive step to ensure that there is a change of story for ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, I think it's Mayowa said on the chat, that happiness can be anywhere. In other words, it has no specific location. You can, you can be happy anywhere. Just like he contributed earlier on, all you just need to do is just to prioritize it. Prioritize that wherever you are, whatever the situation may be, whatever the circumstances may be, you are going to be happy. 
He further said that happiness has no location. And it cannot, it doesn't have to be something in particular that is generating that happiness or somewhere uh, where that happiness can be derived from. Happiness can, can happen wherever you find yourself. So you don't need you don't need to limit your happiness to a particular uh, environment or geographical uh, location to think that is where you can only have happiness. Yes, I think somebody is trying to make a contribution. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I had something. Thank you so much. Okay, um, like we have all contributed, there is no geographical location allotted to happiness. Happiness can take place anywhere. You can be anywhere. You can even be in the midst of a, a big mess and still be happy, which means that happiness is uh, a state of mind. Yeah. That is, yes. you have to be happy in your mind first, mm. which means that once your mind is at peace, once your mind is contented, mm. once your mind is, you know, as fully agreed, come to terms that, I will be happy no matter what. Even if things are not going the way they seem to be going, they should be going. Mm. Even if they have removed subsidy in Nigeria, <laughs> I choose to be happy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You are making sense. <laughs> it's in the mind. It's in the mind. You can be happy anywhere. Even when you are not having your best days, you can't choose to be happy. Exactly. So it is a, a state of the mind. So you can be happy in your mind before you can, you know, truly say you are happy. And if you are happy in your mind, you can be happy anywhere. Exactly. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That, that was a very powerful submission. Uh, very, very, in fact, you are even speaking to the current situation in our beloved country. Uh, even if the government removes subsidies, you just have to make yourself happy, you know, because uh, the rewards that comes after that is worth much more than whatever challenges you may be facing currently. Thank you very much. Do we have any other one uh, who might want to say one or two things, then we wrap up our, we, we, we do a conversation summary before we take our leadership mindfulness thoughts. So if we don't have any contribution further, then I like to say, in the words of Nathaniel Atton, he said, happiness is like a butterfly, which when pursued is always just beyond your grasp, but which if you will sit down quietly, may alight upon you. Wow, that is very powerful. Let me say it again. He said, happiness, is like a butterfly, which when pursued is always just beyond your grasp, but which if you will sit down quietly, may alight upon you, Nathaniel Hatton. Now let's take our leadership mindfulness thoughts. Happiness has no geographical location. Therefore, it can happen anywhere. Let's move to our next question, which is, when will I be happy? Is it when I am married or when I become a PhD degree older or when I become a graduate? or when I become an entrepreneur, when exactly do I begin to feel this sense of happiness? Does, it, does something has to happen before my happiness can be triggered? When can I be happy? Now, the wisdom quote to guide our conversation is from William Somerville. And William Somerville says, true happiness, if understood, consists in doing good. True happiness, if understood, consists 
in doing good. Now let's begin to engage with the conversation. When will I be happy? Okay, oh. sir. Yeah. The truth yeah. is, truth is, you will be happy only when you decide to be. Wow. It is your decision. This, this is amazing. You will be happy only if you decide to be. Wow, that's powerful. Go ahead. Because, it, like we said, that is it, it, it starts from the mind. Mm. So when your mind has not fully grasped mm. the fact that it needs to be happy mm. to live this life, mm. it needs to be happy to stay above depression, oppression, mm. or all manner of things that life may throw at you. Mm. If you if you have not truly come to terms with that, you will not be happy and you will not make that decision. But when you make that decision, you can be decide at that very point in time to be happy. So you will be happy only when you decide you are ready to be happy. Wow, that's powerful. You decide when to be happy. Thank you very much. Do we have any additional contribution? Or else we can move uh, to our next question. Now, now, I can also support what my sister has just said, that you, you will be happy when you make up your mind that it is the right thing for you to do. Now, another thing that can contribute to our happiness is by spreading happiness. That is another thing. Another thing you can do to trigger off your happiness, spread happiness wherever you are. Make other people around you happy. Put a smile on somebody's face. Make somebody happy. Make somebody appreciate God on your behalf. Wipe the tears of somebody away. Let somebody sing a new song because of you. We can be happy when we begin to spread happiness around us. And somebody is also saying, I think this is Damilola, saying we can also engage in the act of celebrating small wins. When we learn how to celebrate little, little wins here and there, then it can trigger our happiness. Don't commonize any positive thing that has taken place in, in your life, take time to celebrate it. I think, I believe that is what Dami is trying to uh, emphasize there. Don't overlook any moments or occasion of positive, uh, uh, positive uh, results in your life. Celebrate your small wins. And it is the accumulation of those small wins that results into uh, a larger or a life of happiness. So learn to celebrate your small wins. Thank you, uh, Damilola, for that powerful contribution. So do we have, uh, somebody also said, uh, this is Loba said, we should equally be happy for those who are happy. That is, that is very powerful. And I believe that is also in the world's of uh, the great teacher of all teachers, uh, Jesus himself. He said, rejoice with them that are rejoicing. So we, we have to rejoice with those who are rejoicing. We have to be happy with those who are happy because happiness can also be a seed and harvest. When you sow happiness into other people or you, you demonstrate that you are happy for what is happening in the life of somebody, then you can also replicate that same happiness in your own life. And somebody said, I think it's still Toba who, who also uh, continues to say that when we continue to do that, then happiness can now begin to become contagious. It now begins to spread. Now it goes from the person who was happy to you, who is now happy, and you transferring the happiness to somebody else. Do you, do you notice that when you go to a place and you see the people there, they are happy. You know, the tendency for you to, for you is to join them in that happiness. 
For example, if you go to a place where there are money, a loved one, no matter how happy you are, it will be very difficult to create a happy moment in that place. So happiness can really be contagious. And we want to be the one who is an apostle, who is an advocate of happiness, where we, we become a spreader of happiness. Thank you very much. Now, let's try to wrap up our conversation uh, by saying you will be happy, just like uh, Adenike said, you will be happy when you make up your mind to be happy. It's, there, is, there is no way around that. Nothing more, nothing less. You will be happy when you make up your mind to be happy. Now, our leadership mindfulness thoughts is you can be happy when you do something that turns on the light of happiness in you, such as feeding the hungry, caring for the homeless, and giving to the poor. Let me take that leadership mindfulness thought once again. You can be happy when you do something that turn on the light of happiness in you, such as feeding the hungry, caring for the homeless, and giving to the poor. Now let's go to the next question. I, I believe we are all loving this conversation. Personally, I'm enjoying it, I'm loving it. And I believe you are having the same experience as I am having. Now, let's ask ourselves, with whom will I be happy? Who is that person that needs to be in your life that can contribute to your happiness? Do you need to have a wife or a husband? Do you need to have children? Uh, does your parents ask to be in your life every moment for you to continue to be happy? Do you need to have a mentor around you to make you happy? With whom do you want to be happy? Whom do you want to share your happiness with? Who do you want to be a partaker of your happiness? Now, the wisdom quote uh, to guide our conversation is from A. Nelson. And here Nelson says, happiness has a multiply as we divide it with others. Happiness has a multiply as we divide it with others. Just like uh, Loba said, happiness is contagious. When we become a distributor of happiness, begin to see people catching that same uh, fire of happiness. Now let's go into a conversation. With whom will I be happy? Let's talk. Talk to me about that. With whom will I be happy? Okay. Uh, I think to me, with whom will I be happy? I, I think it, it begins in what we yeah. So uh, right. you should be happy with yourself first, like yeah, first. your own personal self first. Right. You should be happy because with yourself you, first. Yes, because without that, there's no how you can even uh, spread happiness. Mm -hmm. So then at the same time, we should not let um, things weigh us down. Like mm -hmm. probably even sometimes corrections, you, you have, you know, you have people that you are accountable to. Sometimes they correct you. You, exactly. you tend to be like, sir? Yeah, I said exactly. Yeah, so you have, you, you, you might tend to be, you know, sad and or you should not let corrections actually weigh you down. It should, it should be, a, you know, it should be a propeller for you to be, be a better version of yourself. So I think it starts from within, like um, uh, uh, sister said before that uh, you, you just have to, is, is a mindset, is a mindset something. Mindset, like yeah. happiness itself, the mindset something. So you, for you to be able to spread the happiness, 
you need to be happy first. You need to be you 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 shouldn't allow things get at you, get to you. Wow, you Even sometimes you make mistakes. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes you make mistakes and you are called to order, probably from my authorities and people you are accountable to. Mm -hmm. You should not let that like get to you that mm -hmm. okay, it's not it's not by force, I can do it alone. You should at least you should try as much as possible to see positivity even in negativity. So I think that's my own contribution to that. That's that's very powerful. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any additional contribution? Who else wants to? You, you remember, this answer doesn't have to be from any of us' perspective. We are simply interested in your own perspective. It's all about you at this time. We are talking about you, not about anyone else. With whom? Will you be happy? Talk to us about it. With whom will you be happy? Now, if there are no other contributions to that, it might be necessary now to wrap up our conversation. I think somebody just sent it. It is a chat. I think it's Adenike who is saying. You can be happy with anyone you decide to be happy with. Wow. My own opinion is that you should choose to be happy with everyone so as to spread that light, that energy you have to others. Mr. Toby rightly said it. It is contagious. So in light of that point of view, Use your happiness light to light other candles. Wow, this is very powerful. Thank you very much uh, for that submission. Uh, now we can then summarize our conversation and say that to be happy in life is significant step you need to take is the discernment of your own community. You see. The truth about life is that it is not everyone that will make you happy. In fact, it is not everyone that, has, that are interested in your happiness. So you have to discern who and who belongs to my community. And whether you like it or not, we all operate in communities. We all have circle of friends. You have some people, it's not that they offended you, but you just discover that there is no compatibility between you and them. It's, it's not a sin. It's just that that is the way the, the chemistry of you and those other people, that is how it has united together. You need to learn how to discern your own community, the people who are going to contribute significantly and immeasurably to your happiness. You need to be able to discern it. And of course, our leadership, mindfulness thoughts is happiness is reciprocal. You can be happy with people who makes you happy. Simple as that. You can be happy with people who make you happy. The reason why some people have an enduring marriage is because there is reciprocity of happiness. The husband is making the wife happy, and in return, the wife is also, also returning that happiness to the husband. And that is why they can go on and on for as many years as God will enable them uh, to, to hold themselves together, to love, and to cherish. Now we are almost wrapping up. The next question is, why should I be happy? Why? What is the reason? Why on heart should I be happy? Is there any specific reason for it? Why should I be happy? Is it because I have a million dollars in my account? Is it because I have just won a lottery? Is it because I have just been employed? Or is it because I have just, you know, finished my doctorate degree? Why should I be happy? Now, let's try to talk about this by trying to understand uh, from the wisdom quote of Charles Dickens. Now, 
each time I remember Charles Dickens, for those of us who might have read that book, when I was in GSS 1, many, many years ago, uh, we read a book written by Charles Dickens. They call it uh, Oliver Twist. Uh, for those of us who, who are conversant with that book, and there is a particular phrase in that book that really stuck with me from that time. Oliver Twist asked for more. Oliver Twist asked for more. And it was written by Charles Dickens. And this is the wisdom quote we have from Charles Dickens. He said, reflect upon your present blessing of which every man has many, not upon your past misfortune of which all have some. In other words, we all have something we can be grateful for. And of course, we all have something in our past that we can decide to complain about. But the point is, why should you be happy? Now let's engage with that question. Let's 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 grab, grapple with that question. Which why should I be happy? Good day, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes, why should I be happy? Um, happiness makes me look good. Wow. And when I'm happy, I can add values to people around me. Yeah. And when I'm when I'm happy, I can have a LD relationship. Wow. And also it helps my mental health too. Wow. So and when I'm also happy, I can receive more from God because a happy person is um, is a grateful person. Yeah. So that's my thoughts. That, that's, those are very powerful points. Uh, this 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 really sums up why we should be happy. When you are happy and you are grateful uh, to God for the blessings that you have upon your life, then it gives you that privilege, that um, audacity uh, to add values to other people by spreading that happiness. You are not just being selfish with that happiness. You, you become a spreader uh, of that happiness. Thank you very mm. much. Do we have any okay. additional? Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Right. I also want to have that <laughs> you need to be happy because you need to stay alive. Wow. You need to, to stay alive. <laughs> you to stay need to alive. Be happy. That's very <laughs> to stay cool. alive. Yeah. You need to be happy. You need to be happy. Because, yes. You need to be happy because even um not being happy is a sign of ingratitude. Yeah. It's 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 a, it's a sign of ingratitude to our heavenly father. It means you are you, you are not happy for the life he has given you. You are not grateful. Mm. for the life he has given you and he can decide to take it exactly. So, exactly. and since the only thing you can give him is gratitude thanksgiving exactly. Exactly. so you need to be happy to stay alive exactly. <laughs> uh, what yes. what you just mentioned now uh, your contribution now just reminded me of what the writer of Ecclesiastes said he said to him that is joined to hold the living there is hope for a living dog is better than a dead lion. No matter how honorable a lion may be, he may be a king of the jungle, but the moment the lion dies, everything, every quality of lion about him is dead. But no matter how not too powerful a dog may be to a lion. If the dog is still alive, he's alive. So we have to be grateful for being alive. We just have to be grateful for being alive. And that is why I believe uh, we are also encouraged that let uh, him or her that has bread praise the Lord. So we just have to demonstrate our gratitude to God for the gift of life. There is nothing we did to earn this life we have. 
we have we did not merit it. There are people that are better than us who could even do more great things in life than we are presently doing, but they never got the opportunity. So we have to be grateful for life. It is very, very important. Thank you, my sister, for that uh, powerful contribution. Now, do we have any other additional uh, contribution uh, as we engage uh, with that question, why should I be happy? Or else I can then begin to summarize our conversation. Now, in summary, the day you realize why you were born is the day you will understand the meaning of true happiness. In other words, we are not truly happy in life if you don't understand your existential purpose in life. There is need for every one of us to understand why we are here in this world. And an understanding of that adds immeasurably to our happiness. Our essential understanding of what our role is in this world contributes in a great measure to our happiness. Now here is our leadership mindfulness thought. Happiness should be non-negotiable in your life. Because if you are not happy or experiencing happiness, in great measure, you will give in to depression. There is no doubt about that. And you don't want that to happen to you. Let me, let me, let me recap that leadership mindfulness thought again because it's really very important. Happiness should never, should, should be non-negotiable in your life because if you are not happy, or experiencing happiness in great measure, you will give in to depression. And you don't want that to happen to you. Now, finally, as we wrap up everything about happiness, what in this life can make me happy? Is it when I have uh, a mansion in Dubai, another one in uh, Washington, D.C., another one in Qatar, another one in London. When, what in this life will make me happy? Is it when my father becomes the president of a nation or when I win a uh, uh, visa lottery to go to another country? What in this life? can make me happy. What is that thing that is capable of generating happiness within you? Now, the wisdom quote, uh, which will help, which will guide us in this conversation is from Charles Kinsley. And Charles Kinsley says, we act as though comfort and luxury were the chief requirement of life. When all that we need to make us really happy is something to be enthusiastic about. I may want to quote, say that quote again. Charles Kinsley says, we act as though comfort and luxury were the chief requirement of life. When all that we need to make us really happy is something to be enthusiastic about. So, let's begin to unwrap, unwrap that question, what in this life can make me happy? Okay. 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 Miss Nikkei, go ahead. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, for me personally, because um, I've, I've been giving it a thorough thought, mm -hmm. there are times that you will have the whole world at your disposal. You have the money, you have the cars, you have everything. Mm. And you will still look at it mm. and have a distaste. Mm. And you will still be depressed. Mm. 
will be meaningless. Everything will be vanity. Mm. So what can make me personally happy is knowing that as I am here on earth, I am fulfilling the purpose, that is the assignment mm. that I have been given mm. to carry out on earth. Mm. That is when you are fulfilling purpose, mm. when you are fulfilling your God-given assignment on earth, mm. it will make you constantly happy, mm. constantly grateful, fulfilling constantly joyful. life. Yes, fulfillment of purpose in life. It gives you that constant state of happiness with yourself. Happiness. Thank yes. you very much. Yes, who else wants to say something different? Or if you want to add to what has been said, you are free okay, to do I... Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, Miss Nikke said partially what I wanted to say. So, but I, I want to put it this way. Like, let me just paraphrase what she said, or probably what I thought. Um, like you said earlier, sir, you said what makes us happy in life is getting to know our purpose, why yeah. we are, you know, we why what God ordained us to be in life, our purpose, fine. But I think this is an individual thing. Yeah. Like the quotes from Charles Kingsley said, we act as though comfort and luxury were the chief requirement of life. But actually, everybody wants comfort. Everybody yeah. wants luxury. Yeah. We all, we all want that. Yeah. If you are broke now, I need money. <laughs> if you are hungry, I want food. Exactly. If you, 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 you might just see probably a new piece of clothing, a new device you want to get. Everybody wants comfort. Yeah. Everybody wants. Some people will tell you, I will better cry in a Benz than be happy in a on bike or in marrow in in a tricycle or something. So, but it depends on individual uh, preferences to me. So what in this life can make me as a particular person happy oh. is uh, to me, have I been able to be a blessing to the person that is beside me oh. or I've caused mayhem. So I, I think it's something we need to like sit down and evaluate ourselves. We we, we, all, we all have a purpose, yes, but how do we go about achieving our purpose? Mm. Are we making our, ourselves happy at the detriment of another person? Mm. Am I trying to reach my purpose? Am I trying to get what I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm living for at the detriment of others? So I think we need to check, we, we need to get the balance. We need to get... Um, I meet at an equilibrium point. Everybody wants uh, comfort. Everybody wants luxury. But how do I make another person happy? Uh, uh, to me, I think my own happiness is paramount. But at the same time, making the uh, my neighbors, other people around me happy as well. I think I I don't know if you could get my point of view, sir. Yeah, you you are you are right on point. Uh, you know. Every one of us, just like you said, uh, I, I I don't know who said that in, in our earlier quote, wisdom quote, he said, uh, everyone wants some of uh, the good things of life. And of course, we also have our own share of misfortune as well. There is nobody who does not want some level of comfort in their life. But I believe what Charles Kinsley says, now to now make it, our chief requirement, uh, that is where our problem begins uh, to pop up, when we now believe that comfort is now the sole reason why we should uh, be alive. Or let me put it this way, when we now think living a luxurious life, because, you know, comfort is, is relative. What is comfort to me may not be comfort to you. But when we now begin to go to the extreme end of comfort, uh, that is, I believe, what uh, Charles Kinsley is trying to emphasize. That rather than going to that extreme point, why not just be enthusiastic, enthusiastic about something that is very important? And just like Adenike said, 
about something you know that this is what you have been called to fulfill in life. Just be enthusiastic about that. Live your life fulfilling that purpose and every other thing will just fall into place. Uh, just like that. Now let's look at what somebody here is saying. Uh, Loba is saying, uh, when we are living up to our values, I'm just trying to uh, rephrase that in my mind because he just said value. He's now he, he added, uh, what value am I adding to others even in my happy state? So when we live up to our true values in life, and adding that value, you know, the, the value that we cherish in our own life, when we now uh, replicate that same level of value, that, those, that same virtue, we now, we now uh, extend it to other people, then that should be what should determine our true state of happiness. Thank you, everyone. Uh, you've all... Uh, contributed wonderfully well. Now let's try to wrap up a conversation uh, with a conversation summary. Now, the day you realize that money cannot fully make any man or woman happy in life is the day you are free from its clutches. Some people believe more money, more Billions of dollars in their account is what will make them happy. But the truth is, the day you realize that having more of this is not going to make you really happy, is the day you'll be free from its clutches. And here is our leadership mindfulness thoughts. More wealth, affluence, houses, cars, may bring temporary happiness. No doubt about it. But in the long run, they cannot make you happy. Let me come with that again. A leadership mindfulness thoughts. I'd like you to begin to ponder this as we wrap up everything. More wealth, affluence, houses, cars, may bring temporary happiness. So we are not saying these things are wrong. They can, they can bring you some measure of happiness. But in the long run, they cannot make you happy. So you need something greater than all these perishable things of life to truly make you happy. And that is what I believe uh, Charles Kingsley was talking about, that we truly need to be enthusiastic about something that is more important than uh, physical money that or physical resources that we may have in our hand. Thank you very much. So we, we have come to the end of the first unit of this uh, executive wellness a leadership program. We are now going to go into the next uh, module, but before we do that, does anybody have a question that we can just uh, we can just have one or two questions before we move to the next uh, unit? Yes, yes, I want to I want to buttress on what you said on the leadership mindfulness thoughts. Yeah, more wealth, affluence, houses, cars may bring temporary happiness. But in the long run, they cannot make you happy. I think this uh, statement resonates with me. We all have a uh, taste. Our taste will change for the moment. Mm. Everybody's clamoring. Ah, I, I want to get this type of phone, this type of phone. And before you know it, a newer version will come. Exactly. And houses, you have some, some, uh, some uh, rich people in the olden uh, days that, that yeah, their house is like is like ghetto now. So and then it used to be the best houses and so exactly. taste will change. Exactly. Uh and, and even models, even from cars, you see exactly. 2008 some people are even riding 2022, they are happy. But yeah. the year will go day by day to write to, exactly. to be wrapped up and no before you know it, out. the car is <laughs> so I think that that brings temporary happiness, like you said, and in the long run. You will still, especially if you are not uh, contented with what you have, 
yeah. you will still be depressed that ah, my mate is using or oh, <laughs> I'm still using uh, an iPhone six. Why my mate is using iPhone fourteen? And you know all those and all those things even bring sadness sometimes depression. Exactly. That I see exactly. my mate is driving is driving for Mati. Now me me I, I, exactly. I'm still I'm still, I'm still on. They are driving Tesla. So, yeah, exactly Tesla. Exactly. And now I'm still I'm, I'm still on foot wagon. You know all those things even thinking yeah. in that. And that's why I when uh, my wife said, um, we, uh, uh, how will I put it? He, happiness make our as in we should be contented with what we have we should we should appreciate little uh, as in little wins and all so that that really uh goes a long way for me as well because all these things all these material things all these perishable things like you said would in the long run become obsolete and you will need other things so i think the coco is uh, uh for us to have the happiness we should be like like you right, right, uh, rightly said we should be uh, able to place it on a purpose on a mission that it's it's how i put it is is till infinity because when you keep seeing people like let's say for someone that has a purpose of uh elevating uh widows or probably helping the widows and all you keep having widows no matter the outcome and if you are going or probably channeling your strength and resources toward that part then mm. i believe it's 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 going to be a lifelong thing. It can even be passed down to generations, and so I think it's just like uh, uh, some businesses that have been passed down from one generation to the other. So I think that's what I want to add to the. But and I want to ask you a question again, sir. In the, right. to wrap all this uh, happiness up, we've yeah. asked ourselves different questions. How do I know I'm happy? Uh, what do I do to be happy? Yeah. With yeah. whom am I to be? All those questions is like the five W's and H of yeah. how to be happy. But my question is this: What do you do when you thought you were on the right path? You are happy, like you are on the right path, doing some things, and you are like, "Oh, I'm happy doing these things." But in the long run, it is, uh, you, you know, we all have different perspectives to things. Sir. Like yeah. Yeah. we have individual perspective to things. Exactly. What is facing me might be backing someone else. Yeah. So what I thought might be right to some people might not. Mm. So how do we uh, align that? How do we, how do we deal with that when you are doing something that makes you happy? But in the long run, it's, um, how I put it, not making, probably, let's even use your immediate partner, for instance, your immediate uh, family happy, as in, how do we go about that? Thank you very much. I think that's a very good question. Uh, I also want to give every one of us a chance to, to reflect on that question and, and give our own opinion before I try to give what I think about it. Do we have anybody happy to <laughs> contribute to that question? What, uh, what do you do uh, when, you when something is making you happy? You are happy within yourself. You are happy doing something. But on the other side, that happiness contradicts the happiness of people around you? What do you do in such situation? Okay. In such a situation, that is what I would call selfish happiness. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you're making sense. <laughs> because if funny, you are happy, truth. If you're happy about something and then that happiness does not, you know, reflect on others that people cannot really, you know, derive any form of joy in mm. what is making you happy, mm. then I think you have to rethink your happiness because that happiness, see, when, when we talk about happiness, happiness is highly uh, subjective. What's, yeah. what, what, what makes me happy? 
it's not the same thing that makes you happy. It's not it's not an objective uh oh what how do I put it? It's not something that is objective, it's subjective. Yeah. yeah. So okay. if what is making you happy is causing stress or distress for others, mm. then that means we need, we need to watch you. <laughs> you need help, <laughs> you need intervention. <laughs> <laughs> you need intervention because or maybe he needs to reprioritize his happiness you need to rep yes that is it that is it yeah <laughs> thank you I, I think that's a very powerful answer i i don't think i would have even given a better answer than uh i believe that's damilola right or i didn't care it's Adenike. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that that was a very powerful uh summary of what anybody, any one of us could have given as a response to that question. That was very powerful. I I don't ever imagine my own submission would have been that very good. Thank you very much. Do we have anybody wanting to say something to that? Or do we close at that point? Okay. Thank you, everyone, uh, for our lovely contribution. I think this session has been very awesome. Am I right? Yes, sir. And I believe we are enjoying every bit of it. Yes, sir. So we are going to go to the next uh, session.